Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and in this video I'm going to show you my plans for game week 31 and see if I can make my rank any worse than it currently is. But before that we'll look at how the leagues are doing for game week 30. The Midnight Mule FPL mini league. Top scorer this week was Max Marsh with Max Ak Marsh 11 or maybe it's Max AC Marsh 11 I don't know but anyway 77 points. And they captained Harlan for 24 points, Martinelli got 13, Kane 9, Watkins 7, Rashford 6. Pope got 11 points, that was, that was very good. As There was somebody I know in one of my mini leagues captained Pope this week, which is incredible. And on their bench, they had no points apart from Henry with 5, but I guess it was a 50-50 between Henry and me. They went for me, 1 point, Henry got 5. Top of our mini league is still Jacob Eriksson with Skaggs Glonton IF who scored 68 points. He also had Haaland for 24, Martinelli for 13, Kane 9, Rashford for 6. He did play Henry for 5 and had me on the bench for 1 but he also had March on the bench for 7 and played McAllister for 2. So every week it's like this, it's so easy where there's a 50-50 call, half the time you get it right, half the time you get it wrong. As for me, I'm all the way down to 99th now. If I drop a bit further, I'll be on the third page. <laughs> I just got 49 points, which is uh, pretty poor. Uh, well, I, I captained the wrong person. I captained Rashford for 12. So I got Haaland with just his basic 12 points. So that mistake cost me 6 points. Apart from that, March got 7, Salah got 5, and nobody did anything else. And then on my bench, my only point really was Henry for 5. So the thing I did wrong, I guess you can say, going back a few weeks when I played my wild card, I set up my team thinking that I would not do free hit 32 and thinking people would want to bring in Liverpool, which they are looking to do now. So I started with Salah and Darwin, knowing they'd have bad fixtures. So that was unfortunate. Obviously, I should have had Watkins instead of Darwin. But this is what I've got. And uh, even if I changed it last week, it would have been worth changing for one week. But... I'm not getting Watkins now. I have thought about it, but I'm still not getting him in. So 49 points. My game week rank is just inside 8 million, which is amusing. <laughs> um, overall, 1,853 points. That's four red arrows in a row. None of them are massively big, but of course they all add up. So I'm now only five points inside the top a million. Let's hope I don't breach the 1 million mark, but we'll see. 619 subscribers despite my poor display some of you are still subscribing so thank you very much for all those that do subscribe and like and comment it is very much appreciated now on the FPL game week website they have a content creators league and when you look at it you see where you'd appear so top of the content creators is Harry Daniels FPL Harry just now he's on 2083 and second is Ben Krellen but he's only 10 points behind they both have their free hit chip left. Now what's interesting, of course, is both of these post their teams on social media. They're both active on Twitter. And so they can see what the other person is going to do. So that's going to be very interesting. This could go either way between those two. Or, of course, somebody else might end up overtaking them. But I'm pretty sure it won't be me because I'm all the way down in 54th. And the only person I watch regularly who's also on this page... Is FPL Focal, good old Oscar there, but he's what 43 points ahead of me. Yeah, so there's a, a reasonable chance I'm not going to manage to catch him. And he's still got his free hit, I haven't got mine. So, my team this is my starting 11 as it would be for this coming game week. Now, we're in game week 31, and game week 32 is a blank for four teams. So, the players that aren't blanking for me are those four. So of my main starting 11, I've got seven blankers, one of which is my keeper, but I have Raya as well. So I've got six players not playing next week, but I do have two free transfers. So I can get from six not playing to three not playing without taking any hits. And that was always my plan. And as I said earlier, that massively backfired because I compromised my team to do that. So of these six, I need to decide which three I'm willing to move on this week and next week. So looking at their fixture difficulty rating, Chilwell's Brighton at home, then a blank, and then Brentford at home. And these colour markings are what 
um, the Premier League, the FPL site themselves colour them as. So they've got both of those as a difficult rating of three. The two Man United boys are away to Forest. They've got that as a green. And then blanking, then away to Tottenham, which they have as a red. The two Brighton boys, they're away to Chelsea, which is red, then blanking. Then away to Forest, they have that as green. And then Haaland, at home to Leicester, which they have a middle of the road. And then Arsenal at home. Now, I don't agree with these colour codes, with the way the official site has them. I think it should look more like this, where they're all much of a muchness, apart from Haaland at home against Leicester at the moment, just got a new manager. That could be a massive score for any Man City players that people have. Now, unfortunately, I can't bring in Man City players. I did think about it, but because they're blanking next week, it's way too much of a hit. And I don't want to risk bringing in I don't know, Grealish or Mares or someone like that, because they may come in, get 12 points, maybe 15 points, and it is worth bringing them in and taking them out again. But they may get two points, and then it's not going to be worth it. So I'd rather get someone else in who can at least stay in the team for two weeks. It's not just their fixtures I'm thinking of, it's what about the money? Obviously, when you buy a player, when you hold them for a while and they go up in popularity, the selling costs increases and so does the buyback cost so I have no money tied up in Fernandez, so I could sell him and if I decide to buy him back I lose nothing. Chilwell and March if I sell them and buy them back and their prices doesn't change I'm going to lose 0.1 million. Rashford and Matoma I'd lose 0.3 million and Haaland I'd lose 0.4. Now I really don't want to sell Haaland because I held on to him when nearly all other content creators sold him for Watkins or Tony knowing that he had blanks and only a couple of games where other players had lots more games I held on to him but I got stung because he also got injured so that was very unfortunate but it affected other managers too so my plans this first transfer if we don't get any injury news I'm almost certainly going to do that is I'm going to sell Chilwell and I'm going to buy Trent and I probably won't buy Chilwell back, even though he's got a double game week at some point later in the season. So I don't mind losing the money in Chilwell because I'm not going to buy him back. Not a problem. However, I'm 0.1 million short of doing this. So I have to do a second transfer this week. And I've spent hours looking at permutations, literally hours. Um, so you can be sure that I'm going to make a wrong decision because it means I've overthought this. So in order of the likelihood of me selling them is Rashford, March and Fernandez, And I've only got Rashford there because of his injury concerns. If we know he's definitely starting, then I'll probably keep him and it's probably March I'd sell, but I may go Fernandez. But if, we, if we're unsure about Rashford or we know he's out, he'll almost certainly be the one I sell. And then I'll bring in possibly Martinelli, 6.6 .6 million, or, and I was thinking about this person before this weekend, I'm also tempted by Elise. And if we look at the difficulty rating according to the official site, that's the mixture of colours for Martinelli and that's the mixture for Elise. Now, if I buy Martinelli, I'll almost certainly sell him in game week 34. So that's me banking in a transfer. But if I get Elise, something else may come up. He's all greens. He's cheap enough where he can sit on my bench and I won't feel so pressurised to sell him. So I've not decided yet, but the most likely is Rashford to Martinelli. But I can be fickle. I, I might change my mind Saturday morning and do something crazy instead. Even more crazy than this. So the captains, almost certainly it's going to be Haaland who gets to wear the old mule hat. And then the vice captain, at least I've already got Salah, he gets to wear the wee vice captain bonnet. There we go. So my team as it stands at the moment, as I'm expecting it to stand, is I'll have Haaland as captain and then Salah's away to Leeds, who let in five goals at the weekend, with his two mates, Trent and Darwin. Then I'm going to have Kepper in goal at home to Brighton. Johnson at home to Man United. Now I'm very happy to play Johnson because Forrest at home and Forrest away are like two completely different teams. And although Man United have been very good defensively, and they have got Casemiro back. If Forrest get a goal, there's a reasonable chance that Johnson's going to be involved in that. Then I'm going to have Fernandez away to Forrest. 
Martinelli away to West Ham, Trippi away to Villa, March away to Chelsea, and Henry away to Wolves. And on my bench, I would then have Raya Matoma, Botman, and Castagne. It's possible I swap Matoma and March around. It's possible Botman and Henry may swap around. I don't know for sure yet. Um, but I guess I'll see how I see how I feel Saturday morning. Not the best team in the league. There's only about a million teams better than mine. Something to be said that's good about this game, or at least the way I see it, is even when I have a bad week, by the time the next game week starts, I'm normally very optimistic that it's going to be a good week and all these good things might happen. And as the weekend plays out, it's like, oh, didn't go so well. And I feel a bit rubbish at the end of the weekend. Then a couple of days later, get to feel good again that we've got another game week coming up and maybe I'll do good this game week. So, um, yeah, lots of um, interesting feelings with this game. Thank you very much for watching. Dopamine hits, that's what I was looking for. Get us a dopamine hits of all these transfers and then when one of your players does score a goal. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>